Hello and welcome to Wilson Center Now, a production of the Woodrow Wilson International Center for Scholars. I'm John Molesky. My guest today is Aaron Jones. Aaron serves as Director of Congressional Relations for the Center, but for the purposes of today's interview, uh, his more relevant title is Creator, Producer, and Host of the new podcast series, Need to Know, which recently created a series within a series focusing on trade called Trading Views. Aaron, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me on. Well, this is really fun to talk about your new podcast. Uh, let me start with sort of the uh, the sausage making process. Where did you get the idea? Why were you motivated to take some of your valuable time and spend it on this undertaking? Well, you know, as the director of congressional relations for the Wilson Center, I'm always trying to look for new avenues to get our policymakers in front of, or get our experts in front of policymakers. And so, uh, the podcast idea came from a discussion with our staff just to try to figure out new ways to do that. And so. Uh, I do think that, you know, certainly in D.C., there is a audience and an appetite for podcasts. It's mm -hmm. sort of unique and certainly amongst policymakers, I think that that's a good way to reach them. Yeah, all the demographics say this is an above average area as far as consuming that type of content. Right. So it does make sense. So uh, where can people find the podcast? We're on everywhere that you can find podcasts. Uh, so we're, we're on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify and pretty much anywhere else that you'd be looking. And so as a producer, how has your Hill experience guided you in translating the information for a primary audience of policymakers, but also you want it to appeal to a broader audience as well? Yeah, the, the, the kind of tagline we use for the podcast is a podcast for policymakers available to everyone. And the idea that I had was, you know, as a former congressional staffer, I worked for eight years on Capitol Hill. You know, I, I went through a lot of meetings. I went through a lot of times where I sat through good meetings and I sat through bad meetings and I kind of learned what I didn't want to do uh, when trying to convey my information to a congressional staffer. And I brought that over to this podcast. So if you have 20 minutes to sit down with a congressional staffer, what do they need to know mm -hmm. about your expertise? And so that's the way I conduct the interviews. I think as a former congressional staffer, I try to uh, look at it as somebody who goes into a meeting, you know, these, these folks on Capitol Hill, they have to be a mile wide and an inch deep on so many issues. And they are expected to just know when you walk into the meeting with them, a lot of times you just expect that they know what you're talking about. You shouldn't always expect that. And sure. so I try to assume some level of knowledge in my interviewing, but not a deep level of knowledge. And so I do 20 minutes uh, so that it's a manageable time. Uh, and really, I, I go into some background information as well as what's going on right now. And, and talk about the, the nonpartisan status of the center, how that's respected on the Hill, and how that factors into the equation. Well, it, it's, it's really what you just said. I mean, they, we are a safe political space. There are a lot of think tanks in town. There's a lot of advocacy organizations in town. Many of them say that they're nonpartisan. The Wilson Center actually has to be because we get a federal appropriation. About a third of our funding comes from the federal government. Uh, we have a federal charter. We are authorized by the US Congress, by an act of Congress. And so we actually have that that uh, responsibility to prove ourselves that we are nonpartisan. And so we really try to bring together really what is within the bounds of the political debate on a lot of issues. So you, you made the transition from the Hill working for a Republican member of Congress to coming to a nonpartisan institution and representing that. And now you're also making the transition from that role to interviewer, to broadcaster, to journalist. <laughs> how do you think of yourself? And talk about how that has gone for you. Um, that's been a very interesting thing. I, 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 I'm a musician, so I am very comfortable with audio production. And so what was interesting to me was I decided to really start this podcast and I'm raring to go. I got my software, I got my interface, I got my microphones, I'm ready to do it. And I'm about to start my first interview, which was with Matt Rajansky. And where's our, the guitar? <laughs> where's the guitar? <laughs> and suddenly I realized, how do I interview? I had no idea how to interview. So it's something that I've learned on the fly. But that's really, I think, in this kind of new medium of podcasting, I'm not the only one who's experienced that, right? Uh, and that's this is a, a new way of getting to people. It's something that I've learned as I've gone on. Uh, certainly learned a lot watching now episodes. So uh, this well, is I mean, you're a natural. I mean, let me just <laughs> seriously. I, you know, when you say a lot of people are doing podcasts and a lot of them are bad, uh, you do a great job. I appreciate that, and hopefully the folks will listen to it and they'll they'll agree with you. And the, the, then the decision within the the series to focus specially on trade, sort of your first 
special within a within a series. What prompted that idea? Yeah, it's a podcast within a podcast almost. Uh, it's, it's called Trading View, so it, it's still housed within wherever you find the Need to Know podcast, you're going to find this series, which right now has five episodes. Um, the idea came from, the Wilson Center is really unique in the trade expertise that we have here. We don't have a trade program. But we have trained expertise that's scattered throughout the building, throughout our disparate regional programs, which makes what's going on right now in trade very interesting because this administration has decided to attack trade issues on multiple fronts. They're not just going after one issue. And you have issues um, with China and with North American free trade uh, as the two biggest ones. But you also have ones, you know, things pop up with India, things pop up with Japan, things pop up with, with Europe. And so I wanted to find a vehicle to really show that we have this expertise within the building uh, and kind of bring it all under one umbrella where it's often kind of just talked about in kind of the regional tax context. I wanted to bring it into one little nice little nugget. And your expertise coming into this initially is as a, 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 a student of Congress, someone who's worked on the inside, who understands the appropriations process, all of these, the, the budget process, to the degree anybody understands that, <laughs> that monster. And, and so, it, it, but you weren't an expert on trade. So one of the things I'm guessing that you've learned is that part of the benefit of the job of the interviewer is it's like going to school. Absolutely. And that, that, I've always thought of my job that way uh, with really in congressional relations, I'm not required to be the expert on anything but Congress, uh, but yet I need to bring our experts to the Hill and bring them to events and things like that. So I'm sitting through briefings and what seems like graduate course studies all the time. It's kind of a privilege, isn't it? It, it really is. My grandfather was a coal miner, so when I thought of work initially in life, that's what I envisioned. Asking interesting people questions and for some reason them being compelled to answer is a privilege. <laughs> more than a job. It, it really is. And it's it is, it, it, I think that uh, coming at it from that sort of non-expert view, I think, helps the interview. I, I don't come in assuming that I know anything about trade. In fact, it's really something that I want to learn more about. No. Um, and so I might ask the stupid questions that maybe also a policymaker would ask if they didn't want to look stupid, right? I'm able to bring that out, and that's really part of the reason for this, is that you know we don't need to assume that everybody knows everything and they've been following it from the very beginning. We're going to start at you know we're going to start at low level and we're going to work our way up. Larry King used to uh, describe his job as learning along with the audience. Exactly. So, so what have you learned about trade? Well, I the way that we went about this was I wanted to not only talk to our experts, but I wanted to talk to people who were actually involved on the ground. Um, I went down to Tennessee and spoke to a couple of folks down there who are CEOs of business. One is a, a tire retailer. He owns a, a chain of tire stores, Roger Porter. Uh, he uh, runs Porter Tire down there in Morristown, Tennessee. And then across town is a company called Forenta, which is a manufacturing business. And Rusty Smith runs that business. They, uh, pre they manufacture dry cleaning equipment right there in Morristown uh, with about 50 employees uh, in a manufacturing plant. And so talking to those guys and just how they're dealing on the front lines with tariffs that have been placed on their raw materials and how that you know, ends up being passed on to the customer. One of the interesting things that I found in talking to them was when I talked to Roger about, well, how is this affecting tire prices? I thought he was going to tell me about what's going on my Volkswagen. He starts talking about truck tires. He starts talking about how the trucking companies that usually buy from him are stretching things out and they're waiting, you know, thousands of miles more before they replace tires on their on their trailers. Um, and they're also uh, they are uh, making just making different decisions on what tires to buy. Inevitably, they're spending more money. And when you're talking about transportation mm -hmm. and truck tires, that means that everything else is affected all down the line. Yeah, I, I just listened to that episode today in preparation for we're speaking with you. And one of the things that struck me, and I can't remember if it was Rusty or Roger, but their sort of wisdom as far as the long game, playing the long mm -hmm, game, mm -hmm. and almost urging politicians to slow it down. Uh, often that's one of the criticisms of American politics is that it, it's everything is short term and nobody thinks about the long game. And when it, who was it, Rusty or Roger? I think Rusty, I think both of them made both this them point made, in different yeah, ways. Yeah. And I thought that was an interesting way too. They, it, one reason why I went to Morristown 
was because this is a place that went overwhelmingly for the president as far as voting. When they 70 were seven, Seventy-seven percent Hamblin County went for the president. So I knew I wasn't going to just get a knee-jerk reaction against the president on this situation, uh, which I think you know, kind of in, within the bubble of D.C., uh, I think that you could you could tend towards that if you're not careful. And so I wanted to go someplace where I know that there are people who support the president and a lot of his policies more broadly, but yet there's this issue issue of business and trying to run a business and facts are facts and I, and you know Roger said this to me that you know if, in my business if I have something that's not working I'm going to pay the price for that pretty quick and this is what a lot of people said well we want to have a businessman as a president right and so now we're really seeing that coming to fruition and Rusty also pointed out that you know we we know that there's issues with China and free trade um, but why did we have to go for the home run right off the bat? Yeah, we could have gone for the, the single, the double, the triple. Yes, I thought that was really a, an interesting way to put it and a, and a really wise and insightful approach. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to swing for the fences your first time at the plate. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So um, you mentioned you're a musician. Uh, you're producing the music for the podcast? <laughs> yes, I, cool. I, I did do that as well. I, this is well, pretty... A one-man band, if I've ever seen one. <laughs> uh, one of the great things about the Wilson Center is that I've been able to really kind of create this indie project, uh, but have the ability to create a professional podcast uh, in this way. Um, I, I didn't want to have to go through the problem of getting rights sure, to music and rights. everything else. Uh, you know, get a couple of mel melodic ideas in my head uh, and can kind of go with them. And, you know, if nobody else will listen to my music, at least you sort of have to listen to it in the background. <laughs> so what's next, Aaron? What do you have on the agenda? And how do you plan ahead on your in selection of your topics? Well, a lot of times, I need to know I'm usually paying attention to what's in the news and kind of what congressional staffers really would want to hear about uh, and what policymakers are really talking about. Um, with the trading views, we have five episodes where we cover uh, views on the ground, as I talked about with Rusty and Roger. We also talked to a couple of Nebraska farmers. Uh, we have talks with our experts on the China trade war and the USMCA, so we kind of understand where that's going. There may be some follow-up opportunities there, right? Because particularly on phase one with the China trade deal, there's 30 days to kind of implement things, and then it's going to take a few months and kind of a trust but verify situation there. Yeah. Um, so there may be an opportunity to go back to uh, some of these retailers, manufacturers, and farmers and see how things are actually going. Uh, in the long view on the um, trade podcast, we've got a few things that are in the works, uh, a couple topic areas that I may want to do uh, some series on. Uh, and we've even had a few people that have asked to be guests on the program, too. So that might be forthcoming and interesting as well. You know you're doing well when they're volunteering. When people actually, well, that's a sure. surprise to me, too, right? So. <laughs> it happens. Well, with, congratulations on the series. Thanks for joining us and talking about it today. And look forward to what's coming up next. Well, I really appreciate it, John. If anybody wants to find it, it's called Need to Know. It's out there on any place that you're looking for podcasts. It's also on the Wilson Center SoundCloud, and you can find it on the Wilson Center website, too. Perfect. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Thanks to all of you for listening and joining us today as well, and we hope that you'll join us again for a future episode of Wilson Center Now. Until then, for all of us at the Center, I'm John Molesky. Thanks for being here. <laughs>